Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Mayor Adams, and I'm joined by uh, District Attorney uh, Braggs and the Police Commissioner, uh, Co Commissioner Caban, and uh, our support teams. Uh, it, it does not uh, give us uh, any joy in coming here to talk about another case where a home daycare uh, provider had children in a dangerous environment. And as we uh, lay out this case and answer the questions from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to give clarity on the roles of we are playing, uh, we just want to uh, really say to the parents uh, who are dropping their children off every day uh, to these centers that we are going to remain vigilant. Uh, we're going to continually modify the rules like they have been modified uh, throughout the years uh, to stay ahead of bad people that are doing bad things uh, in environments where our children are. Who would have thought that we must add uh, to our list of inspections of do we have 3D printers that can print guns? Uh, do we see the presence of various items like fentanyl and other items? Uh, these uh, new methods of creating unsafe environments demand that we stay ahead of those who are doing terrible things in centers where we place our, our children. This is a terrible uh, case. Uh, we saw uh, the presence of fentanyl in the Bronx and just really want to commend the law enforcement officers and the first responders who immediately uh, made apprehensions. I believe we uh, picked up uh, one of the last people involved, if not more, uh, we will continue to pursue that. Uh, but now we're finding, in addition to fentanyl, that in a similar uh, setting, uh, we saw the presence of uh, ghost guns and devices that appear to make those guns. And so there is a law enforcement arm that we're going to continue to pursue. Uh, there are things that the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene that we are going to sit down with the group, uh, uh, a small working group, to look at what we must do legislatively what we must do in enhancing the types of inspections that we do and continue uh, education. And then there's an ed educational component that we are going to roll out with families uh, because uh, many of us uh, that are parents uh, are not familiar with some of the new devices that are being used to make guns or to store uh, uh, narcotics or drugs or opioids. Uh, and we need to really support families uh, and parents on what they should look for in their, in their household. I remember years ago when I was a state senator, I put out that video of uh, what to look through your children, your child's room, and many people, you know, criticize me for doing so. Uh, but it's an educational material. It is unfair that uh, parents are having this awesome responsibility uh, while social media is teaching children how to do dangerous things, we need to teach parents how to stay one step ahead. And that is what we're going to do. I did it as a state senator, a president, and I'm going to continue to do it as the mayor to give parents the tools that they need. This is a heartbreaking uh, scenario of thinking that you're dropping your child off to a place of safe haven just to find out of that it was a dangerous environment where uh, someone was making a gun inside. And again, I want to thank uh, the men and women of the New York City Police Department uh, for uh, moving in a rapid pace, and the uh, District Attorney's Office and the judge uh, for taking the steps that we needed to further uh, this investigation. And we're going to work united. Uh, we are clear that we must protect children in this city, and we're going to lead the entire country on some of the methods that we will put in place to carry out this awesome respons responsibility. Uh, uh, Police Commissioner Caban. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you all for coming. Disrupting the flow of illegal guns has been a top priority for this administration since day one. And when it comes to taking conventional guns off our streets, 
The NYPD is doing a fantastic job. Taking in excess of 12,000 legal firearms since January of 2022. We have also been tracking an emerging trend involving polymer P80 guns, or ghost guns as they are called. These plastic guns have been showing up more and more, demanding the attention of our intelligence division. In fact, a specialized team was created to go after those who sell and purchase ghost guns in New York City. We've also had great success in this area, and Deputy Commissioner Weiner will get into specifics shortly. But the world of guns continues to evolve. Criminals are always searching for ways to avoid the police. And the new frontier is 3D printing. 3D guns, 3D printed guns are among the easiest ways to obtain a gun. They can be made in your home. They can be made anonymously, and they are cheap, costing a fraction of the price for a traditional firearm or even a P80 firearm. 3D printed guns have dedicated online forums explaining how they work. And as today's arrest shows, these types of guns have captured the attention of our kids. The NYPD is not going to stand by and allow this emerging trend to take hold of our city. Today is a call to action. We are talking to the parents. Please check out what your kids are up to. Monitor their internet activities. We are also speaking to those who think printing 3D guns is the wave of the future. You are wrong. The NYPD is dialed in on this trend. We will hold anyone accountable who emerges in these crimes. I want to commend Inspector Milan and her team for their tireless work. These cases are not easy. So much goes into tracing the online footprints of the suspects. Of course, once the case is made, we rely on our strong partnerships with the prosecutor to hold the suspects accountable. Today, we stand with the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, whose presence here sends a clear message. There is a united front on this issue and all matters of public safety. Together, we will continue to protect New Yorkers and make the safest big city in America even safer. Thank you. Now, I'll, now I'll turn it over to Deputy Commissioner Weiner. Good morning, or afternoon, rather, everyone. Uh, Rebecca Weiner, I'm NYPD's Deputy Commissioner for Intelligence and Counterterrorism. Yesterday, members of the Intelligence Division's major case field intelligence team, in coordination with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, executed three search warrants in Manhattan North related to a long-term investigation into the manufacture and sale of privately made firearms, what are called PMFs, in New York City. These warrants resulted in the arrest of three individuals, including two minors, and the recovery of multiple 3D printed firearms. This is an ongoing investigation, and the information that we're going to present to you today is preliminary in nature. What I can say is that our investigation began with a group of individuals, including some minors, who are purchasing ghost gun parts from online retailers, as well as materials and filaments required to print 3D firearm components. Some of the purchases were made through fraudulent means, including the alleged identity theft of multiple victims across the United States. During the analysis of evidence recovered during the first two search warrants, investigators determined that an individual identified as 18-year-old Jamal Coley was also involved in the 3D printing of firearms. Acting swiftly on this new intelligence, our detectives worked with the Manhattan DA's office to execute an additional search warrant for Mr. Coley's residence. It's important for us to underline that this private residence located in the 25th precinct is also a licensed daycare operated by the subject's mother. Inside this daycare facility, investigators recovered a 3D printer, 3D printing tools and plastic filament, two completed 3D printed firearms, one 3D printed assault pistol in the final stages of assembly, and one additional 3D printed lower receiver. Mr. Coley was arrested. At the location, Investigators also found an obviously maltreated and neglected dog. The NYPD's animal cruelty unit responded and removed the dog for evaluation. The circumstances around these galling arrests are part of a larger trend into what's become a global problem, namely the manufacture and sale of privately made firearms, or PMFs, which include ghost guns as well as 3D printed firearms. When made well, Ghost guns and 3D printed firearms operate just like commercial firearms. In the hands of teenagers, they can inflict just as much violence. 
This is a growing trend in New York City and one that our major case field intelligence team has been at the forefront of grappling with for the past several years. We take an intelligence-based approach to identifying and disrupting individuals who are engaged in the manufacture and sale of PMFs with the aim of intercepting guns before they make it to the streets. We follow the data where it leads us, and the data is alarming. Within the last three years, the number of PMFs and gun parts that we've recovered has increased significantly. In 2021, the NYPD recovered 260 PMFs, 263. Last year's number was almost double that, 436 recoveries. Year to date, the NYPD has recovered 290 PMFs. Compared to last year, we've recovered three times as many 3D printed firearms this year, and the year is not over yet. Since the 2021 inception of what we at the NYPD like to refer to as Inspector Courtney Nyland's ghost gun team, we've recovered 500 PMFs and enough additional parts to construct 200 more. All of these guns and gun parts could have resulted in violence in our communities. We couldn't have done and don't do any of this alone. Our approach to combating the scourge of PMFs relies on relentless collaboration with our federal, state, and local partners particularly the Manhattan DA's office. We also want to recognize the New York State Police, HSI, CBP, and ATF for their partnership. Thank you so much, and I'll now turn it over to DA Bragg. Thank you so much, Deputy Commissioner, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Police Commissioner. We've all mentioned the United Front. This work in collaboration is one of the best collaborations I've seen in law enforcement. I want to be clear about that, um, and I want to, in particular, thank, we've heard her name a couple of times, but Inspector Nyland. Um, the Ghost Gun Initiative was started in 2020. Uh, her team of uh, dedicated detectives who put themselves in the harm way, harm's way daily are keeping our city safe, uh, and it is due to her tremendous leadership, and it is an honor and a privilege for my office to partner with the entire NYPD, but in particular, particular Inspector Nyland uh, in the Ghost Gun Initiative. Uh, with me today from my office uh, are Jody Kane, uh, the chief of the Rackets Bureau, uh, in which uh, our Ghost Guns work is housed, and the acting chief of our Investigations Division, uh, and ADA Bonnie Sia, who is the driver uh, of this work in our office. And the collaboration uh, is second to none in terms of what I've seen in my time in law enforcement. Since 2020, our office has brought prosecutions based on this collaboration that involves seizures of 93 ghost gun parts, 66 ghost guns and firearms, 428 high capacity magazines, and 47 silencers. Those are prosecutions that made New York and Manhattan safer and that are based on this extraordinary collaboration. Uh, as for today, uh, the hard work of the NYPD and the district attorney's office has resulted in charges that will be presented uh, later today and there will be an arraignment. Uh, the charges will include uh, illegal firearms possession, uh, manufacturing of an assault weapon, uh, and reckless endangerment. And I want to underscore, as uh, Deputy Commissioner Weiner said, uh, this investigation is ongoing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, Inspector. Thank you, Deputy Commissioner, for this collaboration onward. All right, we'll take a few questions on this case. Miles. We're going to start off with Miles Miller, NBC. Um, you been, yeah, the, uh, the last time uh, this daycare was inspected was in February. Um, was there anything found during that inspection? I know that they had kids who were not of age in there at the time. Second, is uh, April, his mother, being charged in connection with this case as well? Um, hi, my name is Christina Chang. I'm with the um, Department of Mental Health and Mental Hygiene. Um, with regard to the inspection, so there was the last inspection was February of 2023. Um, they did find um, three violations that were related to documentation around feeding um, and um, sleeping schedules and preferences from the family, as well as um, verification from doctors that children don't ha didn't have any infectious diseases. Um, they, they were cited those um, those uh, uh, issues and um, and they were taken take, took corrective action. Um, and verify that the paperwork was, was done. So that was the last time that we were there. Thank you. Do I have to answer? Sure. 
Sure. Uh, the, the charges are, as uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, described earlier in her remarks, uh, the investigation is ongoing. Uh, Dean Moses, AM New York. Um, how often are these daycares inspected? Um, what does that process look like and who does it? And how are you guys making sure now with, in light of this uh, new products being found in like uh, underground trap doors, how are you making sure that this, these, these um, spaces aren't getting um, looked over in the future? I'll take that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so every daycare center has, um, it has, has undergo initial inspection um, before they can open. And so we're making sure that our priority is that it's safe um, for, um, for children. And so um, we're looking at things like fire exits. We're looking at window guards. We're looking to make sure that medications and cleaning products are, are um, locked away and, and out of reach of children. Um, and then, um, and we will conduct annual inspections um, following their, their initial license. Um, some of them are announced and some of them are surprise inspections. Uh, I'm gonna go with Tina Moore, New York Post. Thanks. Hi, this might be for the health department. How long has this daycare been in um, business? Um, the initial license was issued in February of 2021. And then also uh, for the police department, have guns been sold out of this location or do we have any idea what they were doing with the guns they were making? Th that's still under investigation right now. Uh, I'm gonna go over with Jay Dow from PIX11. Uh, Two-part question. The first is, did this execution of the warrant and the arrest of Mr. Foley take place during or after daycare operating hours? And second for Ms. Chang, uh, regarding annual inspections, there are about 7,000 in the city, from what I understand, $18 million in funding to the city. Um, is there any effort to increase the number of inspections besides that one-time unannounced annual inspection? The warrant was executed after daycare hours. Um, well, there's, there's at least one annual inspection. If there are any violations that are found um, that need to be rectified, there will be compliance inspections um, that happen as well. Um, and we are always working with um, both internally and with our state partners um, to tighten up our inspection protocols um, so that we can guarantee, that we can assure the safety and welfare of our children. Okay, Michael Gartland from the Daily News. And, and, uh, before you do that, Mike, and um, just to you know, to point out, there is no backlog now on inspections. Inspections are up to date, so it's not as though we have a backlog of inspections. They are up to date. It's just about broadening what they're looking at. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if we could get a little more clarity on that, like in terms of, you know, um, Fasan talked about this. I think with the, the fentanyl situation. What, what might inspections be brought into cover? Like, what, what is the city looking at in terms of that? Um, what's being considered? Has, have you guys come up with a plan yet on how to do that? Well, there's, there is an extensive list that the inspectors go through now, and it's pretty elaborate and extensive of what they have to check off so that no one is going in trying to guess on what you need to be inspected. What we want to do, working with uh, the team of health professionals, law enforcement professionals, prosecutors, is sit down and put together a working group, look at the pre-existing list, and state, are there other items we can include uh, on that list? Uh, are, there, are there things we can do to assist those inspectors as in training uh, with uh, those who are knowledgeable on how to look for firearms, firearm parts, how to look for illegal substance, substance and other dangerous entity that has been introduced into uh, this conversation. And so once we uh, come away from that working group, we will report to everyone what is our finding and how we're going to expand uh, these um, inspection process. And as a former police captain, do you, like off the top of your head, have things you would suggest for the health department, like, you know, we should look for compartments under the pool or yeah, it is challenging. I think you, when you looked at the Bronx, uh, there was there were uh, trap doors and there were um, places that were hidden. Uh, and after the incident happened in the Bronx, I spoke with Dr. Fasan and his team. Uh, they're not just walking through. People need to. I want people, New Yorkers, to know that they're just not walking through. They're looking in closets. They're looking in bathrooms. They're making sure that people actually live there. Uh, and so there's an extensive process already in place. 
but we are just dealing with a new enemy and we have to stay ahead of those who are finding creative ways to create dangerous environments. And so even the, the presence of a, a manual on how to make a ghost gun, uh, that should uh, pique a further investigation. Sometimes you see something and you say, wait a minute, we want to dig a little deeper. Uh, seeing um, powdered substance, uh, it's just, just going to take us to sit down with our law enforcement experts and say, what are some of the things that we can further enhance our, our training? We don't want to sit back and, think, and say that, okay, we, we're doing a great job. No, we, if we found fentanyl in one day care center, and a few days later we're finding guns, we have to uh, continue to evolve our product. Describe the daycare. Is this the similar uh, setup to the Bronx daycare, where it was run out of a home? And where were the guns and the 3D printers found? Were they in areas where the children were? So let's first describe. Right. The it is a it is a family um, daycare site, so it is in, in someone's home, and it's similar to the one that was in the Bronx as well. And were the guns or the 3D printers found where children could access them? I think that's an NYPD question. Law enforcement. Well, they were found in an unlocked room. Yolanda Vasquez, Telemundo 47. Good afternoon. Uh, when the city is going to do the inspections, do they previously inform the owner that they are going or they're doing it randomly? There are announced inspections and surprise inspections, both. And is there any occasions where you guys go like randomly because you have any information or something like that? Um, if there is something that's reported, is that what your question yes. is? Um, I think that if, some, if there's something that's reported, we might talk with law enforcement about that, right, um, to follow up. Um, but we will, and if there's a, there's a reason for us to, uh, that's raised for us to go in, we will um, perform an inspection. Right. Inspector Lyon, you had mentioned that um, you were seeing a, a spike in, um, in ghost guns being taken off the streets. And you mentioned there's, a, there's a, uh, an internet component to uh, these guns being found. How are you discovering these guns on the internet? Are they being sold on the internet and you guys are tracking that? Um, well, well, there's many ways. Through our partnerships um, with the district attorney's office and legal process, there's a lot of chatter about these guns on open source. There are actually forums on open source where people are uh, readily teaching each other how to make them, um, are putting up the blueprints for the 3D printed firearms, and are pretty much trading blueprints for 3D printed firearms. Because um, as of right now, um, 3D, uh, there's no legislation for 3D printed, printed blue, uh, blueprints which are then sent to your 3D printer um, and the guns are printed. So you can get these pretty much for free on many different websites. And in addition to that, you, you can buy, again, on open source subscriptions to get a little better quality um, 3D printed blueprints to make these firearms. And so we, and we, and we, we, we have to keep up. Uh, you know, this, um, this young man was 18. And uh, any of you who uh, if you have a young child, you know, technology they're just extremely comfortable with. Uh, and they can navigate uh, these devices from cell phones to iPads to so many things. And, you know, these folks are preying on our children. You got an 18-year-old in his room, 3D printer. He's not making little robotic toys. He's making guns. That, that, that should be scary to everyone. That's, that's extremely frightening. All right, we've got time for about two more questions. We're going to go back to uh, Miles Miller, NBC. Uh, just to um, A, DA, if you can talk about who's been charged in this, and then second, was this daycare shut down? Is it still operational today? You don't have to answer that. I mean, anybody else can answer too. But. So I, I, I mean, we, we covered the, the person charged and the charges earlier, so I have so nothing to add to that. And I believe it was yep. covered in the deputy commissioner. Okay, and then, and then secondly, uh, has this daycare been shut down? We had an inspector um, go on site this morning, and, um, and there was no access, so it's, it's closed. All right, we're going to go to our final question over here with Jay Dow. I understand. There's a lot of discussion about um, enhancing the training of the state and local inspectors, but is it possible, given the NYPD's wealth of experience in detecting guns and drugs out on the streets, that we could see some kind of formal partnership with members of the NYPD joining those inspectors out during those inspections to see if there's 
a, a 3D printer or a ghost gun or fentanyl or traces of it in a daycare center. And that's part, that's, and that's part of the assessment um, that we want to do. We, we really believe that there's going to be a need of a combined effort. And these skills uh, could, can be learned and acquired. And if there's a period of time we need before we can totally take off the training aspect of it, we're willing to do so. And that's what this working group is going to do, do a real analysis of how do we go about enhancing the level of inspection. Dr. Fasan alluded to that um, after the Bronx uh, situation. And we're going to make sure we can come up with a good tool and the, and the police department, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, uh, the DA's office, this is a team effort. Um, all of us feel the chill of what we saw in these uh, last two incidents. And if you, you are an adult, uh, you, we are asking uh, you know, adults to be extremely vigilant around determining what is inside the households, and we want to give them as much information as possible so they can become knowledgeable of these items. But we are looking at that to see how do we go about executing this next phase. All right, thank you everyone for your time and attention. Thank you.